tutorial. We'll just be taking off from Melbourne Airport today in a Boeing 737-800. It's a default aircraft and the only change to it is it has this, this nice livery. You can find it on absimilflatsim.com anywhere. It's um, pretty pretty easy to find this type in default 737 Virgin Blue. Uh, that's the old Virgin Blue's livery. They're now Virgin Australia. Um, and they've painted the whole aircraft white and left the tail uh, as Virgin, which it does look impressive if you're a business passenger, but I quite like the vibrant red livery. Uh, we're just going to take off now. Get underway. Uh, brakes on. So what I'm going to do just the cars around. Go into the map. I'm going to put the aircraft uh, just out at this point at alongside ARC. So we're in line with our um, ILS. So you're going to put altitude at 4,000 feet. Heading through for zero, airspeed at one nine zero. So it'll be pretty. Uh, it's going to be shaking around a bit when um, we load it, but I'll just pause it. Okay, under control, um, and then we'll make our eyeless approach, and I'll talk everyone through the the aspects of it. I'll also make a video uh, with ATC. So this is just without ATC. Um, just let's get the aircraft set up first. So I'm going to set my speed. To 190 knots. That's what I want to Speed set. Auto throttle can't come on yet. It will come on once we unpause it. Altitude set to 4000. We'll go 3500. So there we go. It'll descend to that. Uh, the nav GPS thing. Let's uh, set the autopilot on. Nav GPS. Uh, speed hold. What are you doing? Um, Oops, just turn back a minute. Back. Alright, the aircraft is slowing down to, to uh, 190 knots. I'll keep the lights on. This is just setting up the aircraft. Um, we'll just get one setting of flat just to lower the nose a bit. Once the speed comes down, we'll take that off. Get the gear up for now. <coughs> Not sure if the sound will be in the video, um, seeing as I'm, I'm using a microphone, so that's where the sound's coming from. Um, it shouldn't really affect you doing your ILS approaches if you don't have the sound. There's no like sound or uh, markers that we need to be able to hear or anything like that, so um, we should be okay. So right now, we want to get an idea of our position. We're well out from... Uh, we're just, just passing up to BOL, that's just a, an aid to help us line up with our ILS. So what we're going to do now, we're going to press uh, this little dash here on the, on the, on the uh, GPS. Then we're going to click this arrow pointing to the right, we're going to write YMM out. That's the airport code for Melbourne Airport. We're going to click enter once, twice, which will get it on activate, and then activate it. So now the aircraft wants to turn. If we had GPS hold on or VOR lock, it would work. Um, but let's get rid of this message. Um, and we hit PORC again. P R O R L C. Select approach. ILS 16. We're going to click that. Click vectors. Enter. Load. Uh, click P R O C again. And click activate to final. And this doesn't make any difference to our ILS approach. It just gives us a, a really easy way to line the aircraft up with the runway without having to use a localizer until we get closer in. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to descend to 2,500 feet. I'll do it at 1,100 feet per minute. And I'm going to make a 90 degree turn. So 250 knots. Uh, 250 degrees. So I took my heading select on. We need to make sure that our nav GPS setting switch is set to GPS at the moment because we want to align ourselves with the GPS line, which is just you can just see the top of it. That'll line it, line us up with the runway, but we need to use the um the localizer for that. So I'm just putting on the um I've got air traffic on. Yes, I do have traffic on, so this might be a problem. But, oh well. Uh, just setting the flaps to five degrees now. 190 knots, let's slow down to 185, yeah, 185 
This watching your controls are a little nose high, so we won't get that down a bit. So let's slow it a bit more. 110. And flaps are set to 10 degrees. Let's on the spoilers with shift slash. Well, oh, slash forward slash, I think. Okay, now we need a we need to set up our ILS approach. So we'll go we'll go map. Click on map. We need to find the airport that we're landing at. So this one click down here. Click on that. Uh, look for your runways. Runway 16 will be landing on today, which holds us in foot 109.700. That's our ILS frequency, and the ILS heading is 161. The, IL, the 161 we will put into the CRS or the course um, course uh, button on the autopilot. So you got to remember that, or write it down, or do whatever you can. I, I know it in my head. I've done it so many times. Um, so we'll just set our course now to 160 degrees. We don't need to do anything else for that. Then we open up our radios, which is shift two, and we change this this nav here that I'm changing to one zero nine point seven zero. And this is only just for this airport. You, for other airports, you will get different frequencies and different headings. Um, then we're going to hit MKR because that's very important. Uh, if you don't do that, it won't work. Next, we need to put our VOR lock on because this is now going to line us up with this line on our GPS. It's not the proper way you should do it, but it really just helps for beginners if you're just trying to learn how to get it all working. We're going a little nose high. Nose is coming up too far. You really should. I should be a little higher, but for the purpose of this, it's okay. Lining up with that runway now. So you can see on the GPS coming in with this this pink pink line running across there. That'll lead us into our ILS. So let me just turn off the traffic for now. It'll just just uh, probably slow it down a bit more. The traffic is off now. All right, so we're going 195 knots with it, which is a little faster than what we wanted it to be. Let's go 175 and we'll set the flaps 15 degrees, which probably we shouldn't at this point, but we just want I just want to keep it nice and slow and nice and uh, efficient. You know, easy to keep control of things if you're going slow. So now the speedback is on, we can see there on the on the dash there because we pressed and moved it back to there, which is it, it means it will pop up as soon as the wheels touch down. The speed is 175. We're set to VOR lock, which is holding us on the GPS. Well, it will, it will line us up with that. Once we're lined up on the GPS line, we can turn nav. We can switch to this nav button here. Up here, we click that. And then we hit uh, VOR lock. We're going to leave that on. And it will align you with the localizer, uh, which will appear down here when, um, when you click that on. And it will also appear along here. You see how you've got this pink line merging with this little triangle. That's telling us we've, out, we've aligned with our, with our trajectory of what we wanted, which is just running through the, the GPS at the moment. So now that we have aligned with our, or nearly aligned with that GPS, we need to slow down a lot more right now. I'm going to have to rush a little through here because it will get, gets pretty, uh, speeds up pretty quickly here. Yeah. We'll click to nav and we'll get, should be lining up. Yep, we've lined up already. We see our, there we are. We've got our radio altimeters telling us we're at 1500 feet, I think. Um, let's set that, uh, another, another notch of flap, so 25 flap, uh, gear has come down, we're going to lower the speed to 145, 145 knots. Uh, so the aircraft's nose will come down, make sure you keep your speed out of this region here, because that's your speed at which you're going to stall. You want to just keep it just above that. So now if you look forward, you can see that we're above the approach at the moment on our Pappy. Let's get the flaps down more. Flaps 30 degrees. You can see that our glide slope is now coming down. So this is approaching where our aircraft is. We're coming into line with that. So what we're going to do now, once it passes, once the diamond passes this circle here, we're going to hit APP on the control there, and this will guide us into the runway. So hit it now. And once the aircraft detects the the, uh, the ILS is there, we're going to, the aircraft will move down. You see now the flight director is moving to. Uh, stay in line with the with the glide slope, but now it's leveled off. We're just setting at 100, 1,000 feet per minute. We'll slow the aircraft to about 135 knots, a little over what we would normal what uh, 77 would normally land at. But for the purpose of the video, it's okay. We'll go full flap, 
So we're 40 degrees flat, landing gear down, speed brake armed, and we are set on the approach. Uh, a little bit of a, what the, on the diamond on the glide slope, but that's okay. The Pappy's telling us that we're too high at the moment. The aircraft will, we've got the glide slope telling us the right thing, so we're okay. If we look out here, a good way to check is, uh, I don't think the, uh, the Pappy's working correctly at the moment. So we're lined up with our approach, everything's all right. We've got to keep monitoring these things. This, this tells us if we're in line with the runway, uh, if we're on the right heading to land at the runway. Uh, and this one tells us if we're at the right altitude and descent rate, which will guide us into the runway. That's the glide slope, and the bottom one is the localizer. So now the outer marker uh, sound alarm would be going off if we had sound. Um, it's just finished. That's just notifying you that you're passing the outer marker. That would be more useful if you couldn't see the runway, uh, if you're in bad weather. So right now, we're just above our uh, speed where you would be getting into the stall speed area. You want to keep that there. That's a good landing speed. Uh, you need to note, be very familiar of where your auto throttle button is so you can turn it off quickly and idle the throttle because you don't want to be smacking down the runway at 135 knots. We need to slow down on our flare. You also need to be quick on the turning off the autopilot because the aircraft will not flare by itself. Uh, these default aircraft simply didn't come with the ability to uh, auto land. They will use ILS and guide you into the runway, but it won't land itself. So right now we're passing through 560 feet, about 100 feet, about 100 and 190 feet above the ground. It's about 400 feet elevation in Melbourne Airport. Surrender, go. Right away, we're nice on the ILS approach. Look at our window, enjoy the view. A little bit, little bit, little bit uh, low on the approach. We've got our marker, which is our close marker. We're going to turn the autopilot off now. Autopilot's free. Auto throttle is off, so the throttles and the auto and the aircraft are free now. We'll come out to here. We'll idle the throttles. So the throttles are fully idle now. We'll slowly bring the aircraft back into a flare. And a nice touchdown. Keep the nose up in the air. Hit the reverse thrust. We're slowing down now. Monitor the aircraft speed. When it drops below 60 uh, knots, now it has. We cancel the reverse thrust and we start to apply manual braking. You can use manual braking during the, the uh, thrust reverses. You get your aircraft down to about 20, 25 knots. Approach our nearest taxiway that we can turn off. Probably can't turn off at uh, Foxtrot. But we'll go into this one. Apply a little left rudder. And we get the aircraft on some off the runway. We'll bring the flaps up. Check that our spoilers are in, which they are. Our lights are on, taxi lights are on, and you will continue to taxi to the runway. So there is uh, my tutorial on landing the aircraft uh, default 737 in an ILS. Uh, if you have any questions, inbox me. If they're a little hard to explain on inbox, I'll make a video specifically for that if you ask me nicely. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's nice and clear. And again, yeah, any questions, just inbox me. Thanks for watching.